But I, I, I mean, good. like, you know, I don't think this stuff is is really that hard to do. And mm, of course, yeah. I'm saying this with uh, after I've already done. You know what I mean? But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really, I, I also think people should would serve themselves to think a little bit bigger sometimes yes and move with the intention of doing something great and incredible and at at, at, you know i mean within i want to say within reason but like this may not even be the right way it's not properly nuanced the way that i want to say it but like i just think sometimes you just have to think bigger in order to yes you know what i mean and and this also goes into the whole thing about how people see money and yeah. the projects that they do and their expect expectations of their projects and the expectations of themselves or yeah. the people that they work with you know this can really limit your level of you know it's harder to move up if you don't move with the intention of moving up. Yes. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, definitely. You yes. can't just be yeah. expecting it to happen organically all the time. You have yeah. to move with intention, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. definitely. You have to, I think, uh, like, in, in music, I think it's, it's people uh, forget, like, you have to sort of aim for bigger than what you want mm-hmm. like because often you might not hit it you don't think okay i'm gonna make a tune today and it's gonna be a radio hit but you can make something with that intention mm-hmm. um you can make 10 tracks with that intention because it might take you to make 70 radio style tracks for them to really stick and, mm-hmm. and create and i think people especially music they forget that music is a business and can be a career Mm -hmm. and like any other career people get into a job you don't get in that job and think i'm going to stay at this level you a lot of people you know you get into a job and you work to move up Mm -hmm. and i think music a lot of people should approach it the same way and we should also look at like and in music people need to educate themselves very much on where the money is like right now in 2019 as in if you made a song right now Mm -hmm. what are the streams of income Mm -hmm. like and you know we have sales we have publishing but also you could make a song it could get picked up by something and go viral and then it's like okay if that happens how do you capitalize on that moment that Mm -hmm. might last a couple months Mm -hmm. but in those couple months if that viral thing happens you might be able to make a good little bit of money. You might be able to set up a tour off the back of that little viral hit or a little buzz it had online. Mm -hmm. And that touring and keeping those networks could keep you active on the festival circuit for a couple of years, you know? And I think we should, and I think a lot of, uh, a lot of education on publishing and ownership as well is Mm -hmm. really important. I see a lot of, I think not so much now, because I think, now we have a lot more of a DIY generation because of technology, but say a couple of years ago, I, you see a lot of people just signing tracks because they wanted to be, they wanted to be signed by a label mm-hmm. and they don't realize they've given away 50% of their publishing for, which is a lot of, which is, well, which is a lot of, which I've seen many times as oh, well. 100. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, and that's yeah things like that is like i mean it is so bad for people to try and take 100 but unfortunately people will mm-hmm. and if you don't understand how how valuable publishing is mm-hmm. and you sign that over it's uh yeah that could be a, a very very bad thing mm-hmm. i think yeah, a lot of education on um on where where money can be made in music in like this this modern modern time because it's not 
you know, I think people like you have these these streaming services, and a lot of people will hate them from an artist's point of view. You know, people will sit down and say, you know, oh, Spotify pays, you know, something like naught point naught 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 six pence or something like that per stream and things like this. And we have to understand that that is a small amount of money, but it is an income. Because before, people were literally downloading music for free. Mm -hmm. They were literally ripping songs off. Even DJs were ripping songs off YouTube, mm -hmm. playing them in the clubs. Mm -hmm. Listeners were, they didn't want to buy songs. And it's like, when we look at things from, um, say, a streaming point of view, we have to look at it as people were spending nothing, and they were basically illegally downloading music and illegally ripping music. Mm -hmm. To now, if you've got like a Spotify membership or Apple Music membership, you're paying £10 a month for music to listen to all the music you want. And if, from an artist's point of view, if you've made that song yourself and you've got 100% ownership on it, 100% publishing, go through a distributor who can get you onto the streaming services, then you're still owning 100% mm -hmm. and getting it on there. So you're getting 100% of every stream mm -hmm. rather than when you assign to like when people sign to a major label they'll be lucky to get like 15 percent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they have a load of stuff they've got to recoup before they can even start earning mm -hmm. so you know i think uh definitely education in like the music business is important because there is money to be made like yeah. in the uk we have a huge buzz in the sort of rap scene here and the grind music scene here somebody artists are making some very serious amounts of money and they own 100 percent. they own their own labels mm -hmm. um and their outgoings are, are low because they're going to the studio recording songs um they have like they'll have like a videographer in their team so they're shooting a video with mm -hmm. they're not paying you know 25 grand to some random production company you know and they have friends who have really learned about the music business who will be managing them as well. Mm -hmm. And they have a really close team and their outgoings are very low and their income's very high and they have 100% ownership on everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, they've really used technology. It's like kind of when rap music in the nineties started making a lot of money independently, mm -hmm. but the technology wasn't there to be able to get your video on MTV. Right. You had to be signed to get your video on MTV. Mm -hmm. Where now we have YouTube where you can upload your video and mm -hmm. you've got your own fan bases mm -hmm. and you can get, you know, a million views if you're that popular. Mm -hmm. And all this can recoup on the streams and then leads to gigs and things like this. And, you know, the the the, the UK scene is really interesting to our to be involved with and really interesting to watch as a business. It's just so many independents are just taking back ownership of everything. And with that sort of like that sponsorship slash influencer space as well, you have all these other little deals where brands will be coming to a music artist. And because that music artist has, you know, a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, brands will come to them and will be like, we'll pay you X amount to wear our trainers in a photo and post about it mm -hmm. you know and and you know there's there is these these i think like obviously per sale there's a lot less but there's also these these areas where you can get your outgoing so much lower and you know before to get a sponsorship as a musician or anything like that was like pretty much impossible when now if your social media is strong they're not caring about your music they're just seeing that you've got hundred thousand followers on instagram right and you can get paid to uh to post about a product that you probably might have bought anyway mm -hmm. you know that you might have bought and taken a photo with anyway where now you can get paid a lot of money for for doing it it's right, right. yeah i do yeah i do really like i do really like technology for those things social media for those things well this is i mean this is what i um I mean, when you think about it, like we are talking about entrepreneurship, right? Yes, yes. And, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and that's the thing. It's like 
everybody, you know, the fact that, you know, I've seen these YouTube guys, st- you know, starting their channels with their iPad or their iPhone sitting mm-hmm. in the car talking to people. Like, you know what I mean? You There's so many things that you can do with something that everyone has practically. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it's just a matter of... I mean, that's what I was saying about, like, with your father. It starts with the intention. Like, if you say, yeah. I want to I wanna start a, I want to start some sort of business, now you can literally find the information that you need yes. to start yeah. the business. And half of the things you can do with the phone, like, this is how one of the um, factors of how we started our record label, because I started off, um, like... Okay. With the with a record label that I started with my girlfriend at the time and a and a yeah. um a really good friend. And um I remember though we had I had met a, a guy who he he had a record label and to me in my okay. mind I thought it was like this thing and it was so crazy hard to do and you you know and when I went to his place I'll never forget it. His record label was it a fax machine and an answering machine? Okay, yeah. And and I remember like coming home and and talking. I mean, he did mentor me a little bit, but I I mean, you know, when when I sat with my friends, like, well, we could do this, we could do this. You know what I mean? I know how to get a fax machine. I know how to get a, a answering machine, and. Yeah. Um, and we learned as we went along, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and we're talking, there was no internet at this time. There was... That's nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, most people ain't even going to know what a fax machine is, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you... I was just imagining it, like... Yeah, or an answer I was machine. just trying to imagine it, like, yeah. how did you guys... I was trying to imagine it, how did you run a biz... Like, how did you run a record label business... Yeah. With just a phone and a fax machine, yeah. it's like, and I think about it like, that's what, yeah, that's what it was like. Yeah. Phone and a fax machine. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I mean, it's not. It's not that crazy. Like, and and you know, and that's why I was kind of like saying I don't like this word privilege. Yes. Because yeah, when you talk, because yeah. when as soon as you assign privilege to someone else, this is already if you're saying it that someone has privilege that you don't, you are yeah. already subverting yourself. Like you know what I mean? Yes. And yes. 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 At yes. the at the end of the day, like we we may not all start at the same place. Yeah. Personally, I believe everybody has a story. We don't know, you know what I mean? You may have a privilege in this way, but in another way, you know what I mean? Like shit could have been horrible for you at home. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like in a various different ways and it may look so rosy on the outside, but like every individual has a story. So, yeah. for, for me, I just saw what what we did, you know, we didn't know anything. We just got a book, how to, you know, making it in the music business. So, okay, what do we need? Yeah. And I saw this. He got the fax machine. Okay, so we need a, a post office box. Okay, so, you know, and then we need a phone number. And, okay, so how do you get records pressed? Okay, so now I got to learn them. But, yeah. like, rec- you know what I mean? And then we go to the post office, like, and we're like, you know, how do we get stuff in the magazines? Okay, who do we send? Yeah. That's what we were doing. Yeah. Like, we were yeah, mailing yeah, yeah. records to yeah. just random names in the magazine. They don't, and yeah. then you have to go to the, the, the bookstore and just look at all the magazines, yeah. hoping to see if the you know. And this is what, but this is exactly what was happening, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's where we are right now it couldn't i mean the only thing that's different now is it's easier for everybody to do it yeah and the, the but the thing that won't change is 
there's going to be tons of people who think they can't do it. You know what I mean? Yes. And yes. so is so if you are one who thinks that you can do it, then then you can do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. Uh, yeah. And and what I see a lot of now in modern times because 